Bromley and a lecturer at Newcastle College. I have a foundation degree and I have two of the courses now of this year. So if you know anybody that's like 16 and <coughs> wants to do a course in web design, uh, I'm your person. If you know someone that's 16 and has failed all the GCSEs, I'm still your person. So send them over to me. And if you want to do a degree, come to me. All of that, that's my book. Okay, so I'm going to talk about pseudo classes. So I kind of expected more of a mix of expect so many people who are already all very well learned CSS, so hopefully I'm not going to be like teaching my granny to suck eggs. And you need to learn a little bit about this, and I'm not going to suck when I do my live coding, because I'm going to do it, nobody else. <laughs> uh, so uh, we'll see if it's hope you'll pick up. I mean, I know that when I'm teaching and I'm researching stuff, I do always find things that I, well, I didn't know that. So hopefully you'll have a bit of that today, or not, I don't know. Okay. Just the default kind of, let's get a quote from the W3 schools, the pseudo classes used to define a special state of an element. So a pseudo class is very special, very, very special. But if you look at the meaning of pseudo, it's much more negative. <laughs> it's, it's very like, it's false, it's sham, it's false, it's pretentious. So basically, unlike classes, a pseudo class, it doesn't exist. It just isn't. Yeah. Sorry. Missed my excellent bit where I said that you're not real. They're not real at all. They're not like real classes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of sad for the pseudo class. They're a bit of a sham. They're not real. But actually, pseudo classes you can do a lot with. So we're going to have a look at some of them. So we have dynamic pseudo classes, right? Dynamic pseudo classes. That sounds like amazing, doesn't it? This really calls for something really like, wow, amazing, wow. That's kind of like hover, right? So the first pseudo class that you learn when you're learning CSS is hover, isn't it? It's like, and then you have that moment, and I notice this when I'm teaching people CSS. You have that moment where it's like, whoa, it's changed color. I've made that happen. I'm like a web designer. It's great. So you have a few that go with Hover. You have your link, visited, Hover, and active. They're the four. They're the ones that, you know, back at the beginning of CSS, we knew all of them. And there was a really handy way, apparently, of us knowing what order to put them in, which was this love-hate thing. Does anybody else remember this? Like, you were supposed to remember love-hate. Few people showing their age there. But the idea was that it was like you could put love hair. I mean, it's kind of really crap, wasn't it? I mean, <laughs> it was really like, oh, someone thought this is really great. And what I did was kind of write it on a piece of paper and put it on a post it I mean, who else would do that? But I mean, I don't think I need to go over loads about those ones because I think it's pretty standard. That's your link site you visited, they've been there, hover when you were over it and active. But there is another one called focus. I don't know if many people have come across that. And I think the thing with active and focus is a lot of people are like, well, isn't that just the same thing? It's active and you're focusing on it. Well, no, it isn't exactly the same. So I found a nice little website. I think it was on CSS Tricks. I should have written on where it's from. But it kind of shows, I'm going to show you, excellent, this is me using the internet. A video of me using the internet showing you the difference between active and, right, this is active as I click on it, it goes down. And if we go to the form, this is focus, so I'm focusing on something. So focus is usually used around kind of form elements and stuff. And you can see as I focus on it, you get like the boundary box, it changes the colour in there, so it shows me focusing on that element. So that's the difference between active and focus. Also, in proposed in CSS1, now how many people are like, I hate the visited state because I don't use it, I want all my links to be as the normal link is. Anybody else have that problem? One person put that up, great. <laughs> so this is for you. In proposed in CSS4 is any link, which basically links those two things together. You still keep it separate, but it's proposed that it will link those things together. I don't know if many people, many people looked at the new CSS4 proposed um, things. I mean, look at them today, they'll be gone by tomorrow. Uh, there seems to be a lot of them coming in and going out. It's quite an experimental process, but they're trying to kind of with the new CSS features, the same page HTML, they're trying to kind of go along the lines of what are people starting to pick up on. So, you know, they're looking towards uh, the CSS3 processes, why people like them so much, and you'll start to see more of things that you love about SAS and less coming into CSS as, you know, they kind of propose these things. Uh, the other one is local link is proposed in CSS4, and we heard this one. 
Uh, I think it sounds really, really cool. I, I can't think of many instances where I'd actually use it, but the idea is that this pseudo class, whenever you have a link that's a local link, so on the URL and the site you're on, you can assign a different style to that. So for example, you could have a specific icon beside any local links in your site, and external links could have a different icon, for example. <laughs> So that's proposed as well. But as I say, with the proposed, um, if you go and look at the W3 specifications of these, there's lots of uh, things titled blank, and you kind of think, what's that about? And it's basically where they propose something, and then they've killed it off. Next is structural uh, pseudo classes. This is where I can't say pseudo. Um, doesn't sound as good as dynamic, but it's really, really important. This is where we can do a lot. I mean, you can do a lot with um, the the dynamic pseudo classes, because we can make things like do hover and change color, that's amazing. Um, but structural is really, really important. And as with structural, it's really important we understand the DOM. Now, I'm not going to presume you all know the DOM, because a lot of people say, oh yeah, the DOM, I know it. That document object model, yeah, I know, but they have no idea what that is. So I'm going to explain it to you in a way that's going to make perfect sense. It's all to do with pigs, okay? So, every single element that we have in HTML can have children, okay? So our pick here is the unknown list, and all of the list items there are its children. So every single element you have in a HTML document can have children, and this is why this is quite important for the pseudo classes because we can use the fact that every element has children to select various things in the document. Okay, this is probably a more standard uh, document tree, so Body is a child of HTML, uh, the unknown list <coughs> is a child of body, and then we have our little um, uh, list items at the bottom, which are children of the unknown list. Do you think that's a good way of explaining it all? Oh, no. We will nod our heads anyway, so she goes back. Okay, so the great thing about the pseudo, structural pseudo classes is that you don't have to put in any extra markup into your document, you don't have to add extra classes to do things. In the days when we didn't have content management systems, we used to do our HTML documents and then we wanted to select the third navigation item, we could just stick a class on there, it's fine. But of course you can't have that control if you're using something that's dynamically produced, you can't have that. And that's why it's great that we've got the, the um, structural pseudo classes. So. It's all around this nth child, it's this idea that, and this is why some people say that CSS is an object orientated program, and a lot of people would kind of um, disagree with that, but the idea is that with CSS you can talk to something and make it do something. So we have nth child, so this is kind of selecting something, but at the moment we're not giving it any sort of value, so there always needs to be a value with it, so yeah. So to put that into context, the end of child, number three, so people at number three, child number three is blue. So obviously I've put in there um, um, background colour or picky colour, um, body colour, <laughs> uh, blue. Okay, so the simplest thing. So now I'm going to do an attempt at some light coding to show some other structural pseudo classes. You'll note that it's me on the computer doing the coding, <laughs> which was the challenge. And I've got to say, for those that did come up earlier on, it is really, really hard to sit here and write code in front of people. You can be the best developer in the world. When you get here, your mind goes blank. That's just to give me a safety net when it comes to wrong here. Okay, so. At the moment, I've just got M child, just my, uh, as just as I had on my pig, M child number three. And you can see I've got some of my list items, my little piggies. And you can see the number three is blue, pretty straightforward. And then, of course, you can do odd and even. Odd and even, pretty standard. Uh, we can have, we can talk to the first child. So the first in our list, we can talk to the last child, last in our list. <coughs> Even that's odd, it's just blowing my mind. So many times you see the back end generate the class just for the odd room. Yeah, I know so many people still do it. And it's, I think that from teaching people a lot, a lot of people kind of presume that people know things. And then, you know, even like students, when I'm teaching, will shout me out to me and say, but you could have just done it, didn't you? And I go, of course I knew that. <laughs> but yeah. It's because the specs are so dry. Mm -hmm. You think they're relevant. 
<laughs> that one was incredibly interesting. Thank you. <laughs> and, and, and point, could you maybe change the theme or something? I can't yeah, it's yeah. the theme. Oh, yeah. Sorry. How do you change the theme, anybody? No idea. <laughs> yeah, shout it out and then go. How do you change the theme? Does that mean how do you change the theme? Oh, it's down the bottom right. You want to use the side? Down here? Can you read this bit here? You don't need to be able to write read the comment on all of that bit. No, I can't. I have failed. I don't know. I just went in settings. Do you want to code pencil? Well, does anybody else do code? It could be in the behavior tab there. It's in our account settings. Like your actual Google Cloud settings. Thank you. Your settings are invisible in Josh. Ah, yes. Yeah, Any of them? Yeah. Any preference? Oh, that's yeah, it. Try to wear with that. Yeah, so I would always use, for me, we were doing that thing where you wanted to miss a line off, I'd always use first child round and last child. This is all 2.1, but now it's all 2.1. It's all CSS. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, it doesn't mean that enemies implemented it. Them, yes. It's up to the browsers to implement, they don't have to implement it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, so where was I? Right, M, last child. So M last child allows us, us to select two from the last for example, or three from the last or something like that, which is kind of like quite handy if you want two from in or something like that. Uh, we've got, if I put in, some other elements. Uh, no, I'm not supposed to put divs inside of the load list. It's just an example. If I do first a type, It will highlight the first of any type within my other list. Uh, and for time, obviously, the that would give me the second of every single time. To be honest, I didn't know that all of these existed until I started. Like, because you kind of just work with what you know and what projects you're on. Um, every time. Uh, there's one called only child, so if I took everything out, um, it's a problem child. <laughs> yeah, it's a problem child. <laughs> only child. Now you kind of think, what's the usefulness of that? It could be that you know, for specific things, you want to highlight when there's only one thing in there for some sort of reason. I'm sure there's a use for it. And the other one is um, only a time. So it'll highlight anything where it's the only one of that time. Okay. <coughs> Moving on, I uh, found some interesting ones that I didn't know about. I'll admit when I don't know something. Um, is I've put in here a paragraph here, and I can actually select. There's a selector called um, Pseudo selector called empty, and. I 
and select all paragraphs that were empty. So it knows whether there's anything in there. Um, <coughs> background color. Of course, that's not going to show because, go on, in the room. Why isn't that showing anything? Because it's empty. Yeah, there's no height, there's nothing there. So I'm going to put height on there. Box. So I've put a height in it so we can see my black box there. So I guess that's useful for uh, taking out, I don't know, taking things out or adding something for empty. I don't know what that would be useful for. Uh, the interesting thing about it is if I put some white space in there, so there's a commenting in there on white space, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So proposed in CSS4 is one called it's called blank. They've got one called blank. That if there's white space or commenting in there, it will still do the same job. But it's not going to do anything. And does anybody know why it's not going to do anything here? Not it's not supported by any browser yet, <laughs> so it's proposed to be gone tomorrow. So I'm presuming that all of these things have kind of been proposed because people have felt that it's things that will be used by front-end developers. Okay, back to presentation, I know it's funny. Okay. So they're the things that we've covered quite fast. Um, I say, you know, day to day, if I'm developing, I do a lot of freelance work. I probably don't use really yet. I use like first child now and again, and then for child, but I don't really use them a lot. Um, another one that I found that was quite interesting, again, is CSS4 proposed, is matches. Um, again, I know that's quite dark. Uh, I got this off CSS Tricks, which has got a really good article about matches, if anybody's interested in looking at it. And it's this idea that you can kind of, instead of writing out section H1, article H1, you can put them all in together and say it applies to all of the, um, all of the tags, uh, sorry, all of the elements that have he uh, head ones within all of those elements. And probably some of you are going to go, yeah, but I can do that dead easy with SAS. The whole idea is that CSS is building into any some of the elements that are good in CSS preprocess if you bring them into the main CSS specification. So I thought that was quite interesting. <clears throat> uh, next one, Target. Well, this is interesting. Has anybody seen Target yet? It's wow, shebang, amazing. Right, so let's think a little bit about, <coughs> I'm going to show you an example, about the amount of like jQuery and jQuery we put into our sites to make things kind of move and swoosh and stuff. And the fact that we have quite a lot of um, CSS animations. I've made a nice little site here. Oh, is it going to go back to back? Because it's a different it's screen. Great, have to refresh, thank you. Refresh, thank you. Thank you. Right, so I've made myself a, a like scrolling website. I mean, every loves scrolling websites, don't they? Every single student that I have come to me, the first thing I want to do is make, I'm going to make a parallax site. Say, right, we're going to do a project, there's an e commerce website. Yeah, we'll make it parallax. And it's like, no. Scrolling so, video background. Yes, video <laughs> background, movie images, yeah, anything like that. Um, so, about navigation with Tor, and it's just basically a jump down navigation to the different sections that I've got here, pretty standard. Now, the way that Target works is it kind of uh, recognizes, and it's by the, the hash, so it has to be kind of using the anchors and the hash, um, that point on the screen that you're in. Just drop there. Okay. I do apologize. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're excited. Just I look at the <laughs> So it recognises what part of the screen we are based on the anchors, and I can do something at that, bring something in at that point. So what I've done uh, is create a little uh, animation that when we get to my target section target, when I get there, it's going to run my little um, anima animation there that I've got here. And it's going to look amazing. <laughs> so I'm going to go to part three. Oh, wow. Oh, wow! But the possibilities with things like that, <coughs> not that I don't love jQuery and, and JavaScript, it's just, it's nice to kind of think that there's things that we can take away from that and kind of just use CSS to do simple things we shouldn't need to overload our site. You know, when you go to a site, it's like, I mean, I use WordPress myself, but you open WordPress and it's like a gazillion linked, different plugin JavaScripts and 
it's just nice to kind of think we kind of reduce those things. So we're going in that direction as more and more you do. As long as you just like use everybody uses one browser, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> <laughs> you get a lot of prefixes. Yes. But if you use a preprocessor, that's not a huge problem. But I'm all about CSS today. Okay, so that was target, which I thought was quite interesting. So this is why I'm going to mention browser support. I should have mentioned it after absolutely everything I've, I've talked about tonight. Of course, whenever you're using anything like this, think about the browser support. It's, it, it, yeah, there's lots of places to kind of get help. In terms of kind of the um, end child stuff, there's a couple of really good links on there you'll get from our slides when they're sent out. Um, just testers for using the end child, think about what's going to work, what isn't. Uh, next, we're going to do the negation pseudo class. There's only one of them, just, just the one. The negation one. So, taking things away again, this is quite, I think this is probably quite useful. So, right, you'll notice that I've got a class of one of my piggies, he's a bit of a stinky piggy. Okay, so stinky piggy, I've given him a little class. Now, with the not pseudo class, I'm cheating a little bit there, I'm just copying and pasting that kind of. So, list item, if it's not a class stinky, then you can make the colour blue. So anything that's not stinky has got a background of blue. So that can be really useful for kind of um, highlighting if you if it's kind of um, you want to just kind of highlight everything but that thing or do something with everything but that one thing, uh, the not pseudo class is quite cool. Like that. And then next we have moving on from so that's my pseudo classes done. Sorry, end of pseudo classes. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about pseudo elements. So, what's the difference between a pseudo class and a pseudo element? So, pseudo elements are um, according to growing with the work. Uh, they allow us to create items that do not normally exist in the document tree. Now the great thing about um, pseudo elements is that they create extra things for us. So how many people have seen sites, probably recently, probably every day of your life, where people have stuck like a gazillion divs in everywhere to do everything? So we want to reduce that as much as possible and the, the pseudo elements are like ghost elements that can help us kind of add extra bits in. So I'm going to show a few examples. This, these are the pseudo elements. Double. You have a double colon on them. They're very special. They have a double colon on them. I don't actually know why. But they have a double colon on them. The first line and first letter ones are pretty straightforward. I'll show you them just in case you can't guess what first line and first letter can do. So they're not confused with classes. Yes. So, you have first line, I've given the colour red, <coughs> and first letter, I've just made the bar well, refreshing, sorry. You have to keep telling me. Yeah, so you've got, I've got my lovely content here, and the first line here, colour red, could be whatever you want, really, the style. Um, and the first letter is. I've just made it bigger. So it's kind of nicer if you want to kind of style where you're seeing sites. You know, you're seeing more and more people being able to kind of deliver, you know, <coughs> nice editorial design, typography, just by using the code, which is really, really exciting. Dropbox. Big catalog there and then Dropbox. I never know. Oh, like a magazine layout. Oh, right, yes. Yeah. The initial. Yes. Yeah, like magazine layout. Yeah. Uh, what I like about this is that obviously, oh, it's a responsive book. Look, the line is already red. How white screen is, isn't that amazing? Ooh. So, I mean, they're pretty straightforward. Um, but then one that's really, really interesting for us is the before and after pseudo-elements. You can do so much with before and after, and I'm sure that there's a lot of people here doing a lot with these two. Very simplest terms. I'm going to show you here. I've put in a quote here, and using just a block quote mm. at the bottom mm. here, uh, I've made some quotes. So I've created some quotes on my block. 
block quote there and then before is open quote after close quote. But that content could be anything. So I could write um, Also, if I do it in speech marks, it takes it literally to write open quote. Mm. Uh, for example, so you can have any content before and after any element, so that could be really powerful. Another thing that you can use is, does anybody, like, might be showing my age here, remember this whole kind of deal where you make a side, you've got two floated elements, and then your footer ends up here. And I always do this when we learn to, learning to code with the students, and then I go, right, do this, then put the footer at the bottom, and then I go, right, what's happened? They go, it's broken, oh my God, I'm crying and stuff. And it's about that kind of, you know, the floated elements and needing to clear it. And in the olden days, uh, we used to do this now. <coughs> How many you... Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been a lot more general. I know it's a bit hard. <laughs> <laughs> See, if you were students, you would just said anything till the end, and then the end of it, I said, you get that, and they go, no, I can see it. <laughs> you used to do something like this. Anybody else used to do this? Yeah. Have you seen anybody else in that seen documents? If you haven't done it, come on, take that. <laughs> <laughs> so you've seen other people do it, and then you go, yeah. And that's how we used to clear our elements, by doing that, okay? And then someone did the clear fix, which is this one here, which I will. So that the idea is that you put the clear fix class, uh, you make a clear fix class using after with the clear on it, and... Sorry. <laughs> this is the last one. <laughs> this is the last thing. I'm really sorry. <laughs> you put the clear fix class on the parent element, and then you go and find, you search clear fix on the internet, you copy it, and you paste it into your car. <laughs> yeah, I memorized all of it. And of course, the clear is in the after. This is essentially the before and after give you almost another element like a, around it that you can use and every single element in the HR document has the ability to have those extra things around it. So when I see people putting 20 divs around things to do things like this, they need to stop doing it because there's two elements there for them. Uh, other things that you can do with the before and after is written on my notes and I'll tell you. Uh, icons, how many people are using icons and things like, you know, um, so it's fonts for your icons? Yeah, so icon sets, that works using the before. A lot of them use the before. Go for um, external links. Hmm? Go for external links. Yeah, you do for loads of stuff. Um, overlays, all sorts of things. So, you know, when you're kind of thinking about putting that extra div in, just think about me going, don't do it. Think, can you put a before and use the before and after on that element? Uh, safely stand away from the computer again. Cody went okay apart from the refresh thing. Got a bit angry about the refresh thing, but uh, <laughs> that scared me a little bit. Okay, so before and after, really, really useful. I'm going to be honest and say that I don't think I use them as much as I could do. I think there's lots of times where I'm adding in extra elements. <laughs> <laughs> Easily done, that's what he has to say. Don't kick off, it's all right. Okay, so a couple of good articles I found about using the uh, pseudo elements and lots of cool tricks that you can use and things you can use with it, I've put in there. <coughs> and that finishes my presentation. So thank you very much. to hit the pub to ask questions or did you want to ask me? <laughs> 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 I'm really scared of asking you really want to ask me. I don't know. <laughs> we'll give it two minutes. Two quick. Go on, Ellen. Couple of quick questions. Which one? Everyone knows, but it's probably worth there and you can't use before and after on any self-closing practice. Yeah, I'm not sure. 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 Yeah
Yeah, that makes sense though because it's not a complete So that's a very good point. And yeah. also we can chain them. We would love if we could chain them. But you can't say not this. No, um, I want to do after, 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 after. <laughs> 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 full we just, it's it's yeah. because of people like you, we don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, did you did you ever come across the proposal from the Chris Devil CSS for um, to have multiple before and after? I think it was like no, I didn't. It sounds crazy. <laughs> it's like got a column before, yeah, and then a number in brackets, and it would just create keep on crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. That sounds dangerous in the last yeah. time. <laughs> 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 Can you imagine the, the sites that we built like that? We'd get hats. Yes? It's okay, but not only answer to this. Okay, thank you. Any, <laughs> thanks. Any, um, so if you're doing some sort of child thing, like a child first child, yes. order, does it nest? So if I've got some big dom that spans out and every node spawns another five nodes or whatever, and I do first child, do I get the first child? Everything that has a parent. Everything. I think it does. It does the, the yeah. 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 yeah, if you just start yeah. first child, you yeah. get first child by anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 